Hey, what is up everyone? Doug here with Retro Geek Gaming. Thanks for joining me today for another YouTube video discussion. Today, I'm going to be pushing back all my other videos to talk about Nintendo Switch again um, and the hidden features. Now, I watched a video last night um, by Yang Ye that sort of inspired this video. Um, and in this video, they were analyzing all the different hidden features that was shown off in the Nintendo Switch reveal trailer. Uh, stuff that if you pause just right shows indications of things like that. And I'm going to just talk about all the different features that the Nintendo Switch may have hidden. Uh, and I might throw in a couple of my own in there that I think it might have. And you're welcome to join in the discussion by throwing comments down below about what you think about any of these hidden features. Uh, as well as anything that you would like to see come to the Nintendo Switch. One of the first things that this video goes into is talking about the touch screen. Now, this to me seems like it's not really a hidden feature. I mean, I get the fact that Nintendo hasn't really come forward and said, look, this thing doesn't have touch screen. But it seems very likely. I mean, you have to consider the fact that the Nintendo Switch is basically, at its core, going to be a tablet. Essentially, it's, it's, it's essentially a tablet like console. Um, so it does seem like it would make sense for it to have touch, uh, especially multi touch, uh, because it would just again, it would make a ton of sense. Because if it has backwards compatibility to certain games, like let's say New Super Mario Brothers U, for an example, it would be easy to have it to where. You know, as you're playing, you're, you're still able to touch the screen and do the same stuff like that, like you can with a Wii U. The problem with it comes, though, is that it doesn't have the, you know, the, the screen separate like the Wii U did. Uh, so it might be possible that there wouldn't be a touch screen. Uh, but it, it seems like it's, it just seems like it's going to happen. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff you can throw in there. I mean, if you decide to keep, like, for example, the DS library, for an example, um... I can just see it having a touch screen, especially multi-touch because it's easy to reach over and stuff like that. Although if it doesn't have a touch screen, I think it'll be alright because they seem like they're designing the system. Let me get rid of that. They seem like they're designing the system around the idea of simplicity. So you're able to just use a regular control, regular D-pad, regular, um, uh, regular analog sticks and all that stuff to control it. So if it's docked in, there's really no point in you having the touch screen. So it's possible that it probably won't have a touch screen. But it seems very likely for when it is a portable and it's undocked. For you to say, okay, I'm just going to use this thing like a tablet. And maybe just, you know, scroll through Netflix using your finger or something like that. It seems like it's just very simple to throw in there. Uh, but again, just because of the fact that Nintendo has not come forward with it, it's possible. Let's see if the video is also going into a little bit of detail about um, the plus and the minus buttons. I think that that's great that they're putting it on both sides of the of the controller. Uh, and that they're not going with like start and select. And they're not going with like share and options like some other controllers. They're keeping their plus and minus. So it's very possible that the plus and the minus could easily be a share button. Um, but then it goes into detail about the D-pad. Um, now, the regular traditional Nintendo D-pad is still included on the Pro Controller. That's, um, that's a given based if you've seen any pictures of it. But they ditched the traditional D-pad to make it a scattered one, like how the face buttons are. And that's going to be, of course, for when it's undocked. Uh, and when you have the Joy-Con controllers separate. Because when you turn it sideways to play it, like a Super Nintendo controller... Um, the A, B, X, Y buttons are really the up, down, left, and right of the D-pad. Uh, and that's going to be a really cool feature that I think is going to have a lot of implementation. Because, again, it's separate. So it's not like you're going to accidentally hit um, down button when you're trying to hit left. Or, you know, you accidentally hit it diagonally or something like that. I think it's going to be really easy to distinguish the buttons and all that stuff. I think it's going to 
come in a lot of handy. I'm glad they actually kind of separated it. It was a little bit weird at first, but I understand why they did it, especially when you separate the Joy-Con controllers, turn it sideways, you turn the other one sideways, they look identical. That's sort of the point. In the next part of the video, they were talking a little bit about if the Switch can charge on the go. I think that it will. I think that it will have some kind of a, of a different option than just being traditionally plugged in. Because the whole idea is that... I don't know, this is going to be kind of difficult to explain. But the whole idea is that you're going to be able to use it on the go. So I'm sure that they want to have a traditional 3DS style... Uh, external cord that just plugs into the thing and have you be tethered to a wall while it charges. I think that probably the Joy-Cons are going to give it a little bit of battery life. I think that it might have um, some kind of external source that you can like sort of maybe plug into it to give it extra battery life. I think there's going to be additional options. It might still plug into the wall potentially but I don't know. The, the video is not very clear. The video that I'm watching about the Nintendo Switch hidden features is pointing out something where it looks like it's a dock or it looks like it's a thing that plugs into the wall. But what I think it is is because the guy has, has headphones around his, his neck is I think that's just a headphone jack plugged in and it's being mistaken for a charge cord. It could very possibly be a charge cord because it would make sense, especially with it being a portable that you're going to want to have the option to charge it on the go. Uh, especially if it's only going to have like a five hour battery life from what I hear. Um, so I don't think you're going to need to play it for that long outside anyway. So it's probably going to be an irrelevant thing. But if you do travel a lot or if you are the kind of person that maybe, you know, you play it a little bit at, before work and you play it during your lunch break, it, you might go through it quicker depending on how long you keep it undocked and what you use it for. Especially because, you know, multi-use uh, applications, if it has the ability to multitask and stuff like that, it's probably going to drain the battery quicker. But again, I can see where they're coming from, and it would be nice to have that, that charger in there. Though I don't, I don't really think that's a hidden feature, though. I think that's kind of a given, considering the fact that the Nintendo 3DS needed the charger, and even the Wii U gamepad needed a charger, and you could take it with you. I don't think it's really that hidden of a feature, but I can understand because Nintendo, again, did not really come out and state it. But, um, I don't know. I think it will have it. And, of course, um, the big question of if it is a charger, is what kind of charger will it be? Will it be a proprietary one? And I think that this was actually recently debunked. I think that there was actually a recent article that came out that said that, yes, Nintendo will be using USB-C, to charge it. I think that that's great because one, US, um, USB-C means that you're going to get faster charging. It also means that because it's dual sided you don't have to worry about plugging it in the right way. You can just pop it in and, and use it. And who knows, this thing may potentially, since it is USB, may allow you to plug it to the computer for more features. Maybe you can somehow uh, take video that you recorded and put it onto your computer. Maybe you can use it to transfer data back and forth. Um, kind of similar to what you could do with the 3DS and how it could hook up to a computer to send data back and forth. But that was wirelessly. This would just be with a wire. Who knows? There's all kinds of stuff. And I think that would be really neat if they used USB-C and could allow data to somehow transfer back and forth. Um, I think that would be kind of neat. Um, but time will tell again with that. But I can see why that's kind of a hidden feature. Because it's not really very clear what that dock is what that port um, on the bottom of the switch is for. And the next hidden feature that was talked about was whether or not it's going to use any kind of like proprietary memory or anything like that. And again, the video is pointing out that underneath the kickstand there appears to be a rectangular like shape that appears like it's going to be for a micro uh, SD card. But I think that, that was already debunked again. Because one, it makes a ton of sense. First of all, for one, I love the fact the new Nintendo 3DS used micro SD because usually micro SD cards are uh, smaller so they they can load a little bit quicker and also the simple matter of the fact is that usually they come in larger sizes than traditional um, traditional uh, USB and they're usually a lot more um, easier to get their, your hands on them because everything's using them laptops are using them to an extent 
uh, cell phones are using them, tablets are using them, all kinds of stuff are using micro SD cards for their memory. So it wouldn't be too far fetched that Nintendo would want to use that. And the best part about that is that if they use micro SD, you will finally be able to choose the amount of memory that you get, which is beneficial for everyone. It's beneficial for Nintendo, it's beneficial for anyone. Because let's face it, the 32 gigabytes was not a whole lot of memory, but when you ran out of that room, you had to go through all kinds of hell to get more memory into the Wii U. You either had to erase games, or you had to um, find a uh, USB stick that would work with it, and there was only a few brands that would. Or you had to go off and you had to buy a 500 or even a terabyte hard drive, and then again, plug that up. So you had this huge bulk of a mess just to get more memory into your Wii U. This makes it a whole lot easier. You run out of room in your, in your Nintendo Switch, well, guess what? You just go out and you buy more. You bought a 32 gigabyte card, you ran out of room, go off and buy 128 gigabytes. Now, because it's maybe again because it uses the USB C like we talked about, you plug it in and you take the data from the th from the 32 one, put it onto your computer, pop in the 128, pop it back, and you're good to go. You know, just a simple transfer back and forth, make it real easy, and then you can just again take the switch on the go with you, and you have more more room now. Easy, easy, easy. I really hope that this is a feature that there's no proprietary memory. Uh, or if there is internal memory, that they at least give you the micro SD option. Uh, again, similar to what the 3DS did, where there was some internal memory, but they gave you the micro SD card so that we could put more than enough room. Like if you're just the kind of person that you worry about space, you can go if you can buy a terabyte or two terabyte micro SD card, pop it in there, you got more than enough room for anything you're going to want. I think that that's going to be a really great feature. And of course, there's also talks about. Um, whether or not it's going to have a stylus because there's something on the back that looks like there's a little slot to pull out a stylus and stuff like that. And personally, I think that that would be okay. I think that we're done with stylus gaming though. I mean, because let's face it, the new Nintendo 3DS XL has a large enough of a screen that you can just touch it for the most part. Like, I lost the stylus to that thing a long time ago and I haven't really needed it because for the most part, I'm either playing traditionally you know, or using the C-Stick, or I'm just touching the screen real quick. It's usually something that's not that big of a deal. And the same thing with the Wii U, because the Wii U had a nice big screen, so for the most part, I didn't even use the stylus. But, I can see the use in one, especially if it's like one of those cool ones that have like the little gel tip or whatever. Um, I can definitely see the use of it, especially for more precise things. Like, if you put another Art Academy on this thing, you're probably going to want to have that precise drawing. Or if you need to sign for something, because you know how they did with the 3DS, they had the Nintendo parental controls and stuff, and you signed. So if you need to sign for something, or if you need to, you know, do something like that, having that feature would be nice. Because uh, then you can get more precise movement, like a pen. Um, and then for those people that want to use that, they have that option. And if you don't, it's... From the way it looks like where it's positioned, it's very conveniently tucked into where you would never even need to use it. Uh, but only time will tell will be whether or not they use a stylus. I personally won't complain either way. I would like to see them have a stylus just for more precise uh, stuff. But if it really is a multi-touch screen, it's not really going to matter because you're going to more likely be using you know two fingers anyway and stuff like that. So not that big of a deal. And... Um, Another thing that it talked about is that there are detached buttons that appear to be um, right next to the little trigger buttons. And I think this is something that was already pretty much confirmed because, yeah, how would they get that thing to snap in there and stay in there and not just like fall out and drop the tablet everywhere? Uh, so it would make sense to have a detached button that you would press and lift it up. It makes a ton of sense. Uh, I'm not really going to go too much into it because, again, you can very clearly see it on the back of the um, of the Switch, especially when you look around the Joy-Con area right by where the triggers are. You can very clearly see a button next to it. I don't know if those are going to have any other functions except as attached buttons, um, but time will tell with that. But, yeah, there's nothing to really even talk about with that. That's obviously not a hidden feature. It's something that's going to very clearly be there. 
And of course, they showed off um, how you can very clearly see the top air vent, but there's also apparently a back air vent. And I think that that's cool that it's going to have all kinds of air vents to keep this thing running, um, you know, at a cool rate, because that is a big concern, especially with as powerful as the Switch is for as small as it is. Um, it's easy when you got something like the Wii U, which is basically a box, and it has this big fan in it, you know, because it's a console. And when you got the big box consoles, it's easy to put those big fans to keep them cool. But when you got a tiny tablet, you have to figure out other ways to keep it cool. And especially with that kind of processing power, you know, by all means, you know, put a fan in the back as well. And of course, it is obvious because when you look at something like the dock and it has that indentation in it, you're like, what is that for? It would make sense that that's where the, you know, back air vent would come out to keep it cool and all that stuff. Makes a ton of sense. Now, for the coolest part of our, about this whole thing, and the reason why I mostly wanted to make this video, there is a slight hint. And if you go back and you watch the reveal trailer again, um, you'll see it. Everyone is holding, when they have the, when they remove the Joy-Cons and you turn them sideways and they hold them individually for multiplayer, they are holding their fingers out like this, like they're on shoulder buttons. And at first I thought, this isn't going to be a problem. Because I thought, you know, they just had guide rails to be able to put it on. And having the traditional four buttons, you know, of A, B, X, and Y, was going to be okay. Because they're probably going to be used in games like Mario Kart, where you only really need two buttons anyway. Or in a game like Smash Brothers, where again, you only really need three buttons. You know, the first hit, the second hit, and a shield. So, I didn't think it was going to really be that big of a deal to not have shoulder buttons. But apparently there were some people that think, you know, they wonder about the more complex games and stuff like that. But, if you go back and you look closely, you do, do see things. Like when people hit the shoulder, the, you know, the right part of the thing, the character reacts. You know, um, stuff happens. So, it's very much possible that these Joy-Cons could have shoulder buttons that also kind of sort of double as part of the railing. Um, I'm also speculating because I remember reading something about a patent that they had for um, for like light sensors. So I wouldn't be surprised if when you're holding it, if you move your finger and maybe like give it some light, if it assumes that you know you're hitting the shoulder button. And so it's not a traditional shoulder button, but it's like an invisible kind of shoulder button. Um, but I still think that's going to be really cool. You know that they that that they do. That, whether it's a light sensor, whether it's a physical button, I think that's really cool that they threw that feature in there and that they thought about that because, you know, that would be interesting. And that basically makes the Switch Joy-Con controllers like Super Nintendo controllers. They have A, B, X, and Y. They have um, L and R. And the button that you press, whether it be the plus or the minus, depending upon which one you're holding, is essentially the start button. There wouldn't be a select unless maybe they would make that like, you know, clicking in the, um, the analog stick. But, yeah. I think that that's really cool. And you would get more, um, uh, you'd get better controls out of the analog anyway than you would a traditional D-pad. So that really helps with the situation of multiplayer games, uh, for the Super Nintendo. Uh, and I think that that's really cool. And uh, this is also causing speculation now that because part of the video shows like more rounded Joy-Cons that there's going to be shells to put them in there. And you know what? I actually kind of dig that. I mean, it's probably something that I probably would not use because, you know, I don't want to have to take it out of its shell to slide it back in to use it like that. But if you think about it, if you think about it, it really depends upon the kind of game. Like, if it's going to be the kind of thing where, um, you know, you're going to mostly be sitting it down and playing it like, like a judicial controller anyway, having it more rounded would be better. And then there would probably be some people that they would probably only use the Joy-Cons as extra controllers anyway. They would probably never undock the thing. So having it to its extra controllers that are more rounded and more comfortable for them well, that just helps them out, especially if they need to turn it sideways. Although I probably wouldn't, because I'm going to more likely dock it back to its, um, back to its, uh, you know, its, its traditional controller thing, or dock it on the side of the tablet, or even just use the Pro Controller. And then one last thing that I think is really cool about this is it's talking about how uh, when you pause it at just the right time, 
it has what appears to be an IR sensor on the bottom of the right Joy-Con. And I think that that's going to be something that's going to be really good. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about that for just a little bit. Because what I think will be really neat about that is that, one, I always wondered how they're going to make Wii games work. And this would make the most sense because if you turn the, Joy -Con, the right Joy-Con upside down, it essentially looks like it could be a Wii remote. I mean, you would have the buttons on the bottom to where X would be, you know, you'd have A, B, X, and Y, so you'd have that. Um, and then you would also would have the uh, analog up towards the top, so it would be like pressing the D-pad for stuff like that. And then you'd have your traditional, you know, Pro Controller with that. Um, so yeah, I think that'd be really good. And then again, for certain games that are like, you know, again, Wii games that really use that sensor, um, it would be really good. And then that also makes sense as to why the console sort of sticks out a little bit from the dock. It's because maybe the top of it has a, um, the t like a built-in sensor kind of to read, I to read IR. And if that would, that would be really good, that would be helpful for people that want to use that. Like maybe they don't want to get up and use the Pro Controller, they just want to sort of point and aim and click. Um, that could be maybe helpful uh, for, again, bringing Wii games over, uh, and even some Wii U games that might have used that, over to Virtual Console. And I think that it would also be very helpful, again, for virtual reality. Um, because if, if you can set it up to where... You know, you you flip both of the Joy-Con controllers over, and they have IR sensors. Then you just be basically would be pointing at the Wii, uh, not the Wii U, but at the Nintendo Switch. You'd be pointing at the Nintendo Switch with a v with a VR headset on, and now you're looking around. That's the reason why I love the Switch is because it looks like it's setting itself up for all kinds of technology, all kinds of possibilities. You want to play it like a Super Nintendo controller, you have that option with, with the Joy-Con controller. You want to play it like a Wii remote, you have that option by undocking the Joy-Cons and playing it like that. You need to point at something, flip it around, and now you got that pointer right there. You need to, I don't know, play GameCube. You have the traditional controllers there. You have everything set up to make this thing completely backwards compatible and you also have it set up to where you can also set up for VR and other things. I think it's going to be a really great feature. Um, and I'm going to try to remember to put a link to this video down in the description below so you can go through and watch it uh, and see the Nintendo hidden features that it's talking about and form your own opinion. Uh, but also make sure that you put your thoughts down in the comments below about what you think about any, of these, about any of these hidden features. I personally would love to see them announce all of this. SD card, uh, shoulder buttons, especially when you go back and look at the Joy-Con really closely, you can see those shoulder buttons there. Um, again, the, the use of the IR for virtual reality as well as for uh, backwards compatibility to Wii games and stuff like that. Um, even though I would probably never use it because I have a Wii, um, it would just be nice to have that for those people that want to go back and play those games. And also give them the same control options that you would have for the Wii U if they do bring Wii U games over through backwards compatibility digitally. Um, but otherwise, guys, I took way too long with this video. Uh, I'm going to have to splice together a bunch of uh, video that uh, I recorded and condense it all down and all that stuff. But thanks for watching if you watched me this long. I appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Let let me know that you watched it all the way to the end and that you enjoyed this content and want to see more. And if you want, you can also feel free to subscribe because I try to make uh, video content at least once a week. And here lately, I'm probably going to be making a video daily. Uh, so you're always welcome to come back and join me for that. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.